Hey, what's up guys? My name's Faison, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the basics of a Science Olympiad gravity vehicle. If you're new to the channel, I post videos on Science Olympiad every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you hit the subscribe button, as well as the notification bell to be updated every single time I post a new video. But with that said, let's get right into the video. So like I said, in this video, I'm just going to be going over the ba very basics of Science Olympiad gravity vehicle. So we'll be talking a little bit about friction and how you should, how you can use it and overcome it to make your vehicle a little bit better. Then we'll talk about gravity and how you can optimize the weight and center of gravity of your car. And then we'll talk a little bit about braking and a little bit about your ramp and how you can improve it to make it a little bit better. But let's start off by talking about friction. So like everything in the world, there is friction. Friction is what lets you walk without slipping. It's what lets your car drive. It's what lets everything happen with, with you touching it. If I touch this shirt, I'm able to, like it, it takes a little bit of energy to move my hand across the shirt because of something called friction. Friction is just the heat that is created when you perform a certain action that requires energy. And in model car competitions, friction is the number one enemy. And specifically in gravity vehicle, when you only have a certain amount of energy to work with in order to move your car forward, friction is the bane of your existence. And you want to be able to minimize it as much as possible so that you're able to utilize the most amount of energy to go as fast as possible and as far as possible. So the best way to go about it is to specifically use some sort of lubricant or friction reducing agent to between the any contact points of your axles or other moving parts of your gravity vehicle and its frame. The best solution to reducing friction is ball bearings because they provide an insane, I mean insane reduction of uh, friction for your gravity vehicle axles and they're not that expensive you can get them for pretty cheap so if you, and but if you can't find any ball bearings you like or that you can afford you can always use some sort of graphite powder or even i found wd-40 and other types of oils work pretty well with lubricating your axles and letting them spin a little bit better in turn reducing the friction you have to overcome and just to reiterate how important friction is the less friction you have the farther your car will go and the faster it will go so you always want to see or find other ways that you can reduce friction on your car now in addition to friction you have to work on the center of gravity and the weight of your car if you want to go super fast and as far as possible now i'm pretty sure you've seen this car in many of my other videos but this is the car that I use to make or to win my regional competition and this isn't the best car I have. In fact, I made something a lot better that solves a lot of problems I encountered with this car. So as you but for now we'll talk about the center of gravity and weight placement. If you want to learn more about that other car, make sure you let me know in the description and I'll try to make a video about it. But with that said, let's just look at the weight placement. So in the other videos I talked about, the, I said the center of gravity of this vehicle is somewhere over here, pretty close to there. And the reason it's over here instead of somewhere in the middle of this car is because of this big weight block right here. And let me see if you can see it. Yeah, this little hexagonal prism right here is a one kilogram block and that's weighing everything down. Now, if this one kilogram block wasn't here and I just removed it, and then the center of gravity will be moved much closer to the center and that would make it a little bit more balanced per se but in terms of energy you have to use you get a lot less now the reason this is is because of something called gravitational potential energy yeah so what gravitational potential energy is is basically the amount of energy or the amount of gravitational force that is pulling an object down and the higher your object is and the more that object weighs, the more gravitational potential energy you have. Now this is specifically important for a gravity vehicle because your gravity car sits on a ramp. 
and it relies on the amount of gravitational potential energy it has going down the ramp to go down the track and go faster. So if you want to make your car go faster and go farther down the ramp, you're, you need to be able to push that center of gravity as far back as possible, as close to the rear wheels as possible to help you get that more, to get a greater amount of gravitational potential energy. However, it's also important to note that when you put a lot of gravitational potential energy in the back of your wheels, it's a lot harder to stop your car. And that's because it's going so fast and it weighs so much and it has so much momentum that it's super hard to overcome with a standard brake. Like if I go back to this gravity vehicle I was showing you guys earlier, I have, this is a culmination of five different springs. Let me show you guys. And they're not just small springs, they're super big. Hold on, I think I'm rotating it. Yeah, I was rotating it the wrong way. Like this spring is the entire distance this gravity car travels. And it's super strong because there's like, five springs put together in this one piece right here. And even then it still ended up skidding. So you want to sort of find a way to stop your car a little bit better if you are trying to make your car go super, make your car go super fast. And I don't really think it, it's necessary to have the full weight if you're competing in like a regional or, or invitational tournament, depending on the competitive level. But it is 100% important to have for a state or national tournament if you're looking to do well. So I'm just going to speak briefly on how you can make your car a little bit more stable and how you can improve your ramp. So in terms of stability, the larger that your car is in terms of the base area of your wheels, the larger or the farther apart your wheels are in both width and length, the more stable your car will be. So when your car is more stable, it will be more likely to go straight. So that means if you ever built a car and it started to veer off to the left or to the right, then a simple solution, not really simple, but a solution to that would be to make your car wider or longer if you're able to. But with that said, in terms of stability, we'll just quickly talk about the ramp. Now, and contrary to popular belief, the shape of your ramp isn't really what makes your car go super fast. In fact, it's just the height. Basically, the most important factor of your ramp is the height. The higher your ramp is and the higher your gravity vehicle is able to start, the more power and gravitational potential energy you'll have to utilize going down the ramp and down the track. So if you want to improve your gravity vehicle ramp, make sure you try your best to make it as tall as possible within your rules limits. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like, drop any questions or feedback down in the comments below, and please consider subscribing to the channel for new Science Olympiad videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But with that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay unfazed.